This is part four of my interview with John Romero, this time focusing on Quake. Off and on in this video series, we've likened id Software to the Beatles. And if we wanted to uh, continue that trend, I would say that Quake is the Abbey Road of id Software. It's the last great gasp of this amazing collaboration between uh, really two geniuses of game development, John Romero and John Carmack. Uh, now this would be, whereas uh, none of the games uh, that were made easily, uh, there's certainly a lot of uh, long, <laughs> long nights and, and uh, incredible, incredibly long, extensive programming. Uh, really, with uh, Quake, uh, we really start to see some even more unpleasant uh, situations, a lot more drama, infighting, office politics, you know, the sorts of things that can ruin even the best collaboration. And it's a, a really tragic story, and uh, the mind is uh, boggled at what uh, Carmack and Romero might have achieved if they just could have uh, held together you know, for one more game, but alas, wasn't meant to be. But anyway, here to talk about Quake's development and some of the some of this infighting and, and drama that was going on behind the scenes is, of course, John Romero himself. So without further ado, here's Mr. Romero. So Quake was a hard game to make. <laughs> with Doom, uh, you know, even with Wolfenstein and Doom, after two months we could start making a game. Like, the engine ran. We could make levels and, and we could just do it, right? Um, with, with Quake, the engine wasn't ready to make a game for a year. So during that year, it was always, we always thought it was going to happen, like at some point, right? And, um, and I basically wrote Quake Ed, the editor, just like I had done for, for Doom and everything before that. All, I wrote every editor that we had. Um, and so I worked on Quake Ed, and at the same time, I was exploring Quake level design, just like the Doom stuff. Like, what is it going to look like? You know, what are our, what are the rules that we should be following? But it wasn't just me and John. I mean, we had a team of other people in the company. We had nine people working on Quake, and those people had never been through a game cycle from the beginning, except for the people that were on Doom, and that was me and John and Adrian and Kevin. That was it. Those were the only ones that had been on the previous one from the beginning because Sandy came in halfway through and Dave Taylor came in halfway through. So nobody had been there, right, for a whole thing. Like, here's, how, here's what it takes to make a groundbreaking technology and a groundbreaking game design. Boom, go. So they knew, they didn't know what it was like. And so it was really hard on them when it went past the point of sanity of, of how long do we keep on working on stuff that we have to keep throwing away? You know, like, American kept on making level after level for Carmack's engine to test stuff and having to throw them away constantly, you know? Write code in the, in the scripting language and then throw it away because we just redid the scripting language or, you know, that kind of stuff. And so I, after writing the editor and making it so so he could, he could be working on stuff for Carmack and I was exploring design, I was also working on a lot of other stuff. I was working on Hexen. I was working on the Ultimate Doom. I was working on... Um, Concepts. Uh, I was working on. I guess Strife was another game that we were making. Uh, you know that we were helping to, pr to having having created by uh, by Rogue, and um, and then just other business stuff. Not to mention all of the explosion of what happened with Doom and dealing with that stuff, right? And so I I, I was doing all of that so so Carmack and the other guys could focus on figuring out what Quake was going to be like. And that year uh, of no game design and all technical work was really hard on everybody, right? I mean, there's there's a point in time where 
American was just like, you know what, I'm just not excited about these Aztec textures because the the you know the 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 you know I think it was Adrian who had made a whole bunch of textures for Aztec because we thought that we'd have an Aztec section in there, and then it was just like it, it, you know Americans just not feeling it, and I had to go in and, and tell Adrian we got to just nuke all those textures. We can't use them. We're going to have to come up with a new a new theme that um, is, that American can feel. You know, so you know that was that was a hit in just like inspiration and trying to make something happen when we didn't have a gameplay programmer to try and make gameplay because the only coders we had were the people trying to make the technology of the game. So, um, because Carmack didn't want to grow the team, he didn't want to make a, a company too big, we didn't hire other people, you know, and I'm handling a whole bunch of other stuff, so I couldn't do it. So, um, it was really hard on everybody that we were trying to make a game at the same time we're making technology that's not even ready yet. And so after a year of doing that, the engine was pretty uh, was ready to go, but everyone was mentally like busted. So, um, so at the time, you know, we had a big we had a big meeting. It's like, okay, the game is ready to be made, and they're like, <laughs> I'm like, okay, now we can put in all of the world class effort that it takes to make an awesome game design on an awesome engine that you just finished, and everyone else is like, we are done. Mentally, we're finished. We can't even think of a new game design. We just want to finish this thing and crawl under a rock. And um, and I was disappointed in that. You know, I was I was really wanting to do a really awesome new game design. And Carmack was on the fence, and uh, Kevin Cl uh, Adrian was also on the fence. But everybody could see how snapped the people who had never been on a thing from the very first you know day. What, what kind of a toll it took on everybody that we were not maybe halfway there, you know, like the engine's not ready. Can you make an awesome game? No, I can't even think anymore. So, um, so, so anyway, that was really hard. And when that happened, when that decision of, you know what, let's just slap doom weapons in this engine and call it a game. Um, you know, when that, when, when we all had that, that long talk that one day I was just like you know what this isn't the same place anymore um, we used to all know what we were going to do and now there's doubt because the new people have never done this before these new elements you know in id and um, it's not the same place so I was basically you know I was basically going to be done after the quake was done I was done so so I said alright I will redesign the game put Doom Weapons in, we're going to make a really great game with Doom Weapons in the game, but it's not the next level that I was hoping for, and uh, let's do it as fast as we can, and that's what we did, and we, that was in November when we had that meeting, and in January, um, I had called up Tom Hall, and I said, when Quake's over, I'm out of here, and we're going to start another company, <laughs> and so Tom's like, okay, I'm working on Prey, and I'll just, I'll just stop after, after you're out of there. So I worked for seven months on Quake, all the way to the very end, seven days a week. It was insane work to make a game. Even if it was just a clone of Doom Weapons and stuff, it was still hard work to make a really quality game out of it. Um, but we did, you know, it, on June 22nd, that was, that was a Saturday in, of 96. Um, and everyone was so broken that the last month of making Quake, American wasn't even in the company. I mean, he, was, he left. We didn't even know where he was. He just couldn't get a hold of him, didn't know where he was at or anything. He just snapped. And so I had to have um, I had to have Tim Willits finish all his work that, that American had half finished. And um, and then, you know, I had to do a lot of sound work on it. And uh, and then the day that the day that I put the, the game on the net, nobody was even at work. They were all just busted at home. And I went up there on Saturday, and I'm just like, all right, I'm going to put this thing together. I got all the files, and, you know, I'm going to have to, I had to find a, a, a new program to compress and extract because the stuff that we were using before would not do a subdirectory because this was the first id game with a subdirectory, the id1 folder. So I basically put it all together and put it out on the net pretty much by myself. No one, everyone was broken. <laughs> but it was like very symbolic of the end of the era at, at id you know putting that game up it was a hard one to put up what would you
Would you stand up and walk out on me?